Okay, we're looking at the journey of a copper sample through a series of reactions that we will then classify. And if we consider what copper is, well, copper is a metal. It's a solid and it's shiny. And in the elemental state, it goes without saying that copper is going to be neutral. It is, in fact, an element. We can represent copper with its symbol Cu. And if we want to indicate that we're talking about the metal copper, which we are in this case, then we would write a subscript of zero to indicate that this is not charged. We have a total balance of electrons and protons. Now we can change that situation with copper just by adding nitric acid. So if we add copper, add some nitric acid to our copper sample, we'll go from this solid, shiny, lustrous metal to a solution of copper two ions, which is deep blue. What we will also get is some brown gas evolving, and this is due to the formation of nitrogen dioxide. If we consider what's happening to our copper sample, all that we're doing is we're yanking two electrons from copper. So we no longer have a balance of protons and electrons. We go from a neutral copper sample, copper zero, to copper two plus. And that's what gives us this blue color in our solution. At the same time, we have to take those electrons and put them somewhere. So that's where our nitrate is coming into play. Nitrate is accepting these two electrons to become nitrogen dioxide. And that's what gives us this brown gas whenever we add nitric acid to a sample of copper. Now, once we have a copper two sample, we can take and add hydroxide ions, and they will combine with our copper two cation to form a solid precipitate. This bluish green precipitate that forms in the bottom of a flask when we add sodium hydroxide to copper two ions is because we are combining. This is a combination reaction, a synthesis reaction, if you will, in which we take two ions, a cation and an anion, combine them to form an insoluble precipitate. And this precipitate in this case is copper two hydroxide. Now, once we have our copper two hydroxide sample, we can change that simply by adding heat. So if we take our sample of copper two hydroxide and heat that, it's not long before you go from having a blue-green precipitate to a sort of blackish precipitate. And this is due to the fact that we are decomposing this copper hydroxide into two other substances. In this case, we're decomposing copper 2 hydroxide to copper 2 oxide and water. This is a decomposition reaction because we're going from one compound and breaking that down into two other compounds. Now we can get our blue solution back if we take copper 2 oxide and add to this sulfuric acid. Now as all that's going on here is we're taking two compounds and reacting them and they are swapping ions to give two new compounds. In this case, the sulfate of our sulfuric acid is now going to be paired with the copper 2 ion. We're also going to form water in this reaction. And this is what's referred to as a double displacement reaction because we're displacing two compounds to form two new compounds. So we can go from our black precipitate and by adding sulfuric acid go back to our blue copper two ions. Now, what we've done to start this whole sequence of reactions was to oxidize our copper sample to copper two plus ions. We can then take and add some magnesium, just solid magnesium, and this will have the effect of adding two electrons to our copper two ions, taking them all the way back to solid copper. So in this case, we're just taking our copper two ions, and from magnesium, we're getting two electrons now to take us all the way back to where we started, which was our copper metal. So if we review what we've done, 
in this journey of copper through a series of reactions, we started off by oxidizing our copper to copper 2 plus, and this gave us a blue solution of copper 2 ions. We can then take those copper 2 ions and get them to combine with hydroxide anions to form a blue-green precipitate that is copper 2 hydroxide. We can then just heat this sample of copper 2 hydroxide and it will decompose into copper 2 oxide. If we treat our copper 2 oxide sample with sulfuric acid, we'll undergo a double displacement or an exchange with those anions and cations to give us, again, a blue soluble copper 2 salt. And lastly, we can then take our copper 2 ions and reduce them, add electrons to those copper 2 ions to take us back to our neutral copper sample. And that's where we will end at. We've taken our copper metal through a series of reactions, and then the last step, we brought it back by reducing, putting those electrons back into copper to take us to our neutral copper sample.